conversation with Oprah Winfrey. What do you do with your time, and how do you not lose your mind? Um, reading, mm -hmm. you know, writing family, exercising, that kind of thing. I have always been drawn to and attracted to stories of people who are disenfranchised, who are what um, the biblical term refers to as the least of these. The least of these is who Oprah Winfrey went looking for in the solitary confinement cells of Pelican Bay State Prison. All right, guys, are we still shooting? The story was her idea, says 60 Minutes producer Rome Hartman. So each pot has a yard. Got it. What was it like reporting on location with Oprah Winfrey in a prison? <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? The very first time she uh, went out with... 60 Minutes crew was in a maximum security prison, which is in the absolute middle of nowhere in California. I mean, everything logistically was challenging. And I'm wearing a vest, why? Uh, inmates um, using spears or even weapons, homemade weapons, have been able to harm staff. Well, thank you for the protection. <laughs> You went to Pelican Bay mm -hmm. for a day. You spent time in one of the solitary confinement cells in the shoe. Mm -hmm. Here inside the Pelican Bay shoe. I know you didn't spend no. you know, significant time in there, but what's the feeling? I'm still haunted by that experience because I think for myself, the worst possible condition to live on the planet, it would be being held in a solitary confinement unit, unable to see grass or a tree or a leaf, sometimes years and even decades at a time in this room. That is why I asked Clyde Jackson that question. What happened to you the day you walk out of solitary confinement for the first time in 24 years? Well... Ms. Winfrey, to be honest with you, I was dizzy. What'd you feel like a foreigner? Clyde Jackson has been in prison almost all of his life. You know, he said at one point in the interview, he said, I've never really accomplished anything. I've been in prison since I was 17 years old. I think about what you knew, what he knew at 17 years old. And more important, what he didn't know. The guidance he had or didn't have. What puts you in prison at 17 years old. Now you're 54 years old. 31 years you've gone and you haven't seen your mother. Is your mother still alive? Yes, yeah, she's still alive. You know, and uh, I think the hardest part about living today is, you know, the crimes I committed and my mother. The disappointment every time I see her in her eyes. I was very moved by him because it says to me that even the most hardened of Criminals can feel, can, uh, and can be changed. So what will you be doing the rest of the day? I got to do some, some mentorship with some youth out there on the yard and stuff, right? Yeah. It's hard not to feel um, sympathy. At the same time, he did a terrible crime, and we didn't want to lose sight of that either. So how do you avoid losing sight of that? Well, I just think you have to hold these things in tension. Both things are true. He is a sympathetic figure to talk to, and he did a terrible thing. And you can't make him out to be a victim, and you can't make him out to be a hero. You know, our storytelling has to live in that tension. So an inmate would come out of his cell and go to this area, which is called the yard? Correct. So this is it. This is the yard. This is the extent of the yard. This. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't exactly call it a yard. I would. <laughs> the worry with a story like this, of course, is that a viewer may be thinking he deserves everything oh, yeah. he got. And, and I am that viewer. So what are you doing in here to better your education so that you can be a better human being when you get out? I am that viewer who thinks, as you're sitting there telling me about all your troubles and how you don't have this and you don't have that, we can't have this, and I'm thinking, well, you took that away from somebody else. You took that away from somebody else. You're not even here to tell us about it. So why should I care about you? Got today.
today, 52 years old, and went to prison. Well, yeah, domestic violence. Well, okay. yeah. Wow. Okay. All the best to you. Yeah, thank you. So you didn't approach this story with this sort of bleeding heart. I don't have a bleeding heart about it. But the reason why I think you deserve to be heard is because one day you're going to come out. This is what people don't realize. 